Uh, thanks for letting me demo today. For those that don't know me, this is my contact information. I work for Catapult Systems, Microsoft MVP, and Office Development. And there's my blog, so feel free to let me know if you have any questions. All right. So today, I wanted to talk a little bit about library components combined with SVG. So we'll start out with an overview of library components. And then for those that maybe aren't familiar yet, uh, we'll see what SVGs are and why they're unique compared to other uh, iconography or image options. Uh, and we'll go ahead and then see how we can combine library components and SVGs together to result in awesome. So uh, library components are a way to combine functionality uh, that you otherwise might build into your web partner extension uh, into an, a SharePoint framework module, and that allows you to access them from your web parts and extensions. So it's a way to be very um, performant with your functionality. Uh, one of those things that can also be included, as you can see here, are SVG files. So those are files that are fully supported to be packaged together in your SharePoint framework uh, solutions, such as library components. All right, now, what are SVGs? So uh, SVG stands for Scalable Vector Graphics. So think of it as 100% vector graphics, like icon fonts. You might find um, icon fonts, use those kind of iconography images, uh, flat sometimes, that are uh, completely and totally scalable because they are vector. So sca um, Scalable Vector Graphics, or SVGs, are very similar, but, but way better. So you might say, well, is it file or is it markup? It, it can actually be both, because you can reference an SVG, as you can see here, uh, through just its file name and included in something like an object or an image tag. But what's behind the scenes is actually SVG XML markup, right? And that gives you much more increased control as we see in just a moment. But it looks more like your typical XML. You've got close and end tags along with information. You may remember recently a, a demo by Chris on using X, uh, SVG XML path data um, for list and column formatting. And so we'll talk a little bit more about that in a moment. The increased control that it provides you. So when you look here at a particular SVG file URL being referenced, we can see here we've got this little handshake, um, a nice community contribution kind of handshake working together. When you reference it from an SVG file URL, you do have very limited control. So whereas in an icon font, uh, you might be able to change the color using CSS. You can't even do that with an SVG file URL reference. It's very limited control because it is XML. So you don't have a lot of control over it when you reference it from uh, a URL just to the .svg file. But as you can see, when you can access the SVG markup here on the right, you have much more increased control. So each of these little elements here are paths within the XML that can be modified by something like CSS or uh, otherwise JavaScript could modify them as well. So how, oh, so how does that all work together uh, within a SharePoint library component? So I'm going to jump over here to Visual Studio Code. I scaffolded out a library component. Now, this library component will be up in the PNP repository. Um, I'm actually on vacation right now, so I apologize. I'm traveling. I didn't get it up in the pull request yet, but it will be shortly. I'll work on that with Vesa in the next few days. This library component uh, is, a, is a simple library component. You've seen, you can see here I've included a folder called icons uh, to a theme category called teamwork and a bunch of SVGs. And I'll make sure that it includes all of these when it gets uploaded to the repo. Uh, and all of these get packaged together. Now, you may be saying, well, I don't really want to include those in my library component. You don't have to. You could use the tenant asset library that's going to be coming out soon uh, and store them externally. I personally like the library component for the scalability and the, and the uh, modularity of it. So it packages it all together. It's one nice, neat, very portable solution that you can send uh, or deploy however you need to without any external dependencies. Now, what makes this library component unique? So I've included three primary functions. Uh, one is return the SVG URL. So maybe you do just want to use the SVG as you see it. The color is OK, and everything is fine. So you just want to go ahead and reference it there. Uh, this will return to you the SVG dynamically. Uh, so you can call this from your library, excuse me, your web part or your extension. You may also want to get access to the actual markup. You may want the additional control. So in this particular function, it is going to return the SVG markup. And then you can do what you want with that markup, uh, use it in one or more places, modify it using JavaScript, CSS, SAS, whatever the case may be.
And then the last function for now is you may just say, hey, look, I don't want to have anything to do with the SVG markup, but I do want to benefit by it being inserted and available into my content and my web hardware extension. So you can actually make a request to insert the SVG. You would provide the category name. As we see here, there's only one category name for now, teamwork. You would provide the icon name and the class name. And then this is going to go look for that class in your content and go ahead and insert the SVG for you. And there we go, uh, for you automatically. So very, very low lifting there for you. It does all the heavy lifting for you if you wanted to. So let's see how that looks when uh, everything is working. So I've got a site that I've created here. I've created a web part uh, that goes in and taps into that particular component and will give us access to everything. So let's go ahead and start with the SVG URL. Uh, one of them I know is called Handshake. We saw that in the slides. So I'm just going to go ahead and request that SVG. And we see that because I've already packaged up and deployed out my library component, it's referencing that within my particular tenant here. So it gives me access to that SVG. I can then grab that URL and do whatever I want with it within my web partner extension in an image tag or uh, an object tag. Uh, where the fun really gets started, though, is here in the uh, markup. So I'm going to go ahead and open up the network tab here in my dev toolbar. I'm, gonna, I'm going to filter to just .svg. And this is where we really see some benefits over and above icon fonts. I'm going to go ahead and make the same request for handshake, request markup. And you can see it's now pulled over that mark or that particular SVG, but it's done the actual uh, capturing of the markup for you. It's still using just the .svg, but the library component is what is actually going ahead and giving you that markup. And you see uh, it's only 1.3K. It's very small. So whereas we're, with an icon font, you have everything coupled together. Uh, and if you want one, you have to take them all. Here, you can actually access them individually, which is, is very nice. So if I were to go over to another another uh, icon called focus we see now it's able to pull that one individually again just 1k and just for benefit i'll show you handshake again uh, because there is the benefit oh look at that off there you can see it's now pulling it from disk cache which is nice because then it will get cached and so if you do pull back uh, the same one more than once you benefit from the disk cache uh caching it which is fantastic now let's see the option for svg injection uh, we'll go ahead and do the same handshake. And what we're doing here is we're saying we want the icon to be injected into our PNP containers. We've got two here, uh, and those are done by class name. This one should remain empty. So if I request my SVG, you can see it's now populated. I can change that to focus, focus, I need to focus. And you can see it changes. And these have been set up as well to inherit from the theme. So if I go up to change the look, and I select change the look, and I go back to theme, and I were just to change that to my primary purple theme, you see they inherit that as well. Uh, so you can, you can uh, style those perfectly. So now you may be saying, why SVG? It seems like a lot of heavy lifting uh, compared to something like an icon font. Well, again, they're 100% vector, which uh, is about the same as the icon font. That's where the similarities end. Um, but it's smaller than an icon font, so you can actually access them individually, which is a benefit. And it's just cooler. So let's see. It's actually telling me to stop talking and to click here to show you why. So here is a little example of why SVGs are cooler. We've got our developer here, our SharePoint developer, but he looks sad. So it's because he's got no stickers on his laptop. There's a secret button here on his PNP coffee mug. So we're gonna go ahead and click that. It takes us into the sticker lab. We've got our instructions that say, move the proper ingredients into the lab beaker to create a sticker. So we've got some icons here that we wanna play with and we wanna move them in the right equation into our beaker over here on the right. So we'll start with TypeScript. That looks about right. We'll toss it over there. Definitely some PNP samples, toss it over there. This guy looks a little angry, but okay, well, well, my tossing skills are not as good. Go ahead and throw him in. Oh, wait, bullies equal false. Yes, so he needs to go in the trash because PNP doesn't want any bullies. All right, handshake for the community, great. And we got this little creature here. Whoops. Okay, let's <laughs> toss him in. And all right, now our beaker looks ready to go. So I'm going to click it, and let's see what happens when we click it it's actually morphing into Parker. That is one of the cool benefits of SVGs because they are plotted points, geometric shapes. You can actually morph between objects very easily using some JavaScript libraries. So our sticker's ready. 
All right, we'll go ahead. We see he's getting some stickers. Now, once Parker gets placed on the stickers, pay attention to his face. That frown gets turned upside down, and he's got this creepy little look at you that will probably haunt your dreams. I know it has mine. Uh, but you can see the benefit here of using SVGs is this is one big SVG with multiple paths. Everything is animatable, so you can actually modify it using JavaScript. So what's next? More features. So when I get this library component added uh, to the repo, I'm going to add more. Oops, seems to be moving around on me. I'm going to be adding more icons. I'm going to be adding the functions that allow you to automorph between uh, icons listed within there. So you'll be able to make a request to do that. I'm also creating an SPFX command set for list formatting that will include the icons and give you back the individual paths. So those icons are going to be single paths, which make them friendly for list formatting. So all you'll have to do is kind of copy and paste. And is there any other requests that you have? So feel free to reach out to me and let me know if you have any other requests. And oh, by the way, you may have noticed the little animation. I don't know how well it's coming across in the video. That's completely SVG2, this menu system up here. So last but not least, uh, let me just go ahead and bring up the uh, last particular line or slide here. Uh, check out the library component tutorial um, if you uh, are interested in learning more, uh, the repo is right here. Uh, and there's a couple other guys in the community that are doing fantastic work with library components. Alex uh, has a React template blog that just came out, and Vardamon has a using Microsoft Rush to manage SPFX. So definitely check these guys out as well. They are doing a lot with that uh, too, and I will include those links there in the uh, chat window. All right, so thanks for your time. Great stuff. Thanks, uh, thanks David. Appreciate that.